In this video, we're going to talk about lasers at threshold, or I should say near threshold, uh, because we want to know, we figured out in previous videos what happens uh, when the injected current is very high, so when our stimulated emission is the dominant term, uh, so high current uh, stimulated emission is dominant, and when we had low current, our spontaneous emission was dominant, and we figured out that the uh, Li curve, as it's called, or the output power as a function of input current, looked something like this. So initially, uh, the slope was linear, but it was fairly small, uh, and the slope proportionality constant, it's it's got a beta spontaneous in it, it's got uh, some other coefficients I don't actually remember off the top of my head. Uh, and then as you increase the current, eventually you'll get, uh, when you have stimulated emission being dominant, you have a much larger slope. And we said in between, uh, we don't necessarily know what's happening because we figured out what happens when stimulated emission is dominant and what happens when spontaneous emission is dominant. But what about when both of them are active at the same time? So what does the transition from all spontaneous emission to uh, all stimulated emission look like? And to figure it out, we just need to solve the full rate equation so we have our uh, photon rate equation in terms of the spontaneous emission in terms of everything else. Uh, and we know it's just the number of photons uh, changing per unit time. This is just our stimulated emission times the active volume. And we know we can write the stimulated emission as the gain times the group velocity times the number of photons. Uh, and so then we multiply again by the active volume. Or sorry, the stimulated emission is in terms is a density, so we need to divide by the photon, what we call the photon volume, or the volume within which our electromagnetic waves are confined, uh, and we we just replace this uh, v active over v photon with uh, gamma, just for ease of ease of notation, uh, and then we've got our spontaneous emission term, so a certain number of spontaneously emi emitted photons this number, beta spontaneous, are going to be injected into our mode of interest. Uh, and so we just leave that term as it is, based on beta spontaneous times our active region volume. And then we've also got, uh, reducing our number of photons, uh, photons escaping outside the cavity. So this is characterized by a certain lifetime. So photons live a certain amount of time inside the cavity, they bounce around a few times, and then eventually they leave through the mirrors, or a certain proportion of the photons uh, escape each time, and the uh, average time it takes for that to happen is just tau p. And so if we set this equal to zero because we're interested in what's happening at steady state, and we solve for the number of photons, uh, we'll just get that it's equal to our spontaneous recombination times this beta spontaneous term times V active times tau P divided by one minus G V G gamma tau P. But this term up top, this was what, just what we got before. Uh, so this is what we got when our, uh, when we were well below threshold, when spontaneous recombination was dominant. So I'm gonna call this top term uh, NP uh, spontaneous and then we saw from the above threshold video that this term here, uh, or as the as stimulated emission becomes the only dominant term, the gain had to approach one over Vg times gamma times tau p, and we called this the threshold gain. So this we defined as the threshold gain. And so we can clean up this expression quite a bit. Uh, now it's just whatever we would have got if we only had spontaneous emission, divided by one over G over G threshold. This is the number of photons within our cavity in this uh, weird region here. So somewhere when spontaneous emission isn't dominant and stimulated emission also isn't dominant. So this is the equation that we have which describes that. And so now we want to figure out what happens as I change the current from a very low value uh, to a very high value. Where, what does this transition region look like? So to do that, uh, we know that the gain is a function of the carrier density n, 
And so is the spontaneous recombination. That's just a function of n squared. So we know that both this uh, number of photons that we'd get for only spontaneous recombination and this gain are functions of n. Oh, sorry. So let's say for now that the b n squared term is dominant. So uh, in other words, that all of our recombination, all of our a, b, c recombination is due to spontaneous recombination. And that's not gonna be true in general, but all you have to multiply is by some uh, efficiency factor or uh, eta spontaneous or eta r as it's often called. So if that's the case, then we know that this top term uh, this has an n squared inside of it because the spontaneous recombination is just can be written as b n squared uh, and let's just draw a graph for that so let's say that this is our carrier density n uh, and this on the y-axis is the number of photons spontaneous uh, whatever this uh, whatever this value is it's going to look like let's I don't know let's draw this in yellow it's gonna look like some parabola like this. So it's got some quadratic dependence on the carrier density. And right next to it, let's also draw a graph for our gain as a function of carrier density n. So I'm gonna draw the gain as a function of n. And we also know it's monotonic with n, and I'm gonna be real specific. This is the peak gain as a function of n. Uh, we said that this could be well approximated by a logarithm. Uh, so it looks something like this, but it's uh, the important part is as you increase n, the gain gets higher. So uh, so this might be zero inverse centimeters, and this might be I don't know six thousand inverse centimeters, for example. Um, but at a certain point, uh, this curve is going to reach the value of the threshold gain, uh, because this active medium, uh, which has a certain gain as a function of the carrier density, it doesn't know anything about the fact that it's inside a laser cavity. Um, this curve is just a material curve. Uh, we don't, um, it has nothing to do with the laser itself. Uh, and this gain corresponds to a certain carrier density. And we're going to call that the threshold carrier density. So for a specific material, uh, the threshold gain corresponds to a certain carrier density. We don't know what it is, but uh, we're just gonna call it the threshold carrier density. And so over here, when the gain is equal to zero, we might also have the transparency carrier density. So this isn't a, a full curve from zero to n threshold. This is just a partial curve. So what happens now as I increase the current? Uh, well, initially, uh, and let's assume that the carrier density is proportional to the square root of the current. So in other words, uh, our bn squared term is dominant. Uh, and this is when we don't have stimulated emission, so when we don't have to worry about that. And we'll see what happens when we, when we do have to worry about stimulated emission. So let's say that we're sending in enough current that we've gotten beyond the transparency carrier density, and we're starting to increase the carrier density and increase the carrier density and increase the carrier density, and we're going like the square root of the current. So uh, you, you could trace out a graph of how much this gain increases as a function of the current, but that's a little, uh, a little unnecessary here. Um, the, we're just continuing to increase the carrier density and increasing it until all of a sudden we get very close to this threshold gain. And now we've got a problem because we know that the number of photons, this is a real positive integer. So it's always gonna be greater than zero. Uh, and we expect it to increase as we increase the current. So increase the current, we expect the number of photons to increase. And that's indeed what we would, what we got previously, uh, asymptotically as we increase the current and our stimulated emission is very large. Uh, we, we do indeed see an increase in the power and an increase in the, uh, in the photons inside the cavity. So as we start to get very close to this threshold gain on this curve, uh, our proportion, we're no longer proportional to the square root of the current because we can't go beyond this threshold gain. Otherwise, this denominator would be negative and that wouldn't make any sense. Uh, so as we start to increase the current more, our carrier density, uh, say it was here, it increases only by a tiny bit uh, because, so let's say that our, let's just give a numerical example. Let's say that our gain was 0.9 uh, times the threshold gain then if we only need to increase it uh, by 0.09, uh, 
and we increase the number of photons by a factor of 10 uh, because we've got this 1 over uh, 1 minus g of n over g threshold term on the bottom. So we only need to increase by a tiny amount in our threshold gain and correspondingly a tiny amount uh, in our carrier density and that was just going from 0.9 to so 0.9 to 0.99 but now we might go from 0.99 to 0.999 and we'd also increase the number of photons by a factor of 10 but we'd only increase the gain by a super tiny amount so uh, I can't even I can even draw it on the graph and we also increase the carrier density by a super tiny amount and so this term in our numerator, uh, this also we expect to get clamped at the threshold carrier density because it can't, since the carrier density can't go any higher uh, than the threshold carrier density, otherwise we'd get some nonsense going on in the denominator. Uh, similarly, our spontaneous emission, uh, the number of photons due to spontaneous emission gets clamped and I'll call that uh, NP spontaneous threshold. Wow, that's a lot. So if we want to finally draw the number of photons, or equivalently the power output, the total number of photons, uh, as we increase our current i, then let's first only draw the number of photons due to spontaneous emission. So we know that initially it's going to look linear, uh, and we know this slope, we've calculated it before, but at some value of the current, uh, we, or at some value uh, of the number of photons, we know that this value is going to clamp, and we call this NP spontaneous threshold, so triple subscripts, yay. Um, but at this value, we're no longer going to increase the number of photons due to spontaneous emission. So we're increasing the current, increasing the current, increasing the current until we get very close to here, and then we're only making very tiny steps to further increase the number of photons. And so we can just draw this ideally as uh, it goes up to this value and then it just stops and then it's flat for the rest of uh, the rest of eternity. So as we increase the current further, we're not getting any more increase in the number of photons due to spontaneous emission. And this current here, this current we call the threshold current. And we can use the carrier rate equation that we figured out uh, to determine what the threshold current is, uh, all we have to do is plug in the threshold carrier density into our recombination equation. So that was the one a to i, i over q times the active region volume is equal to our total recombination. And this is a function of the carrier density. So all we need to do is plug in the threshold carrier density here, and we can get the current, the threshold current for the laser. And really, this is a smooth transition. It's not a sharp corner, uh, but it's when you plot it, it actually looks fairly sharp. So it actually looks like you've got a kink in your graph. But if you zoom in on it enough, you'll see it's really a continuous transition. And so it's a little, uh, it's a, a little deceptive to call this a, a real kink. And so now what about the number of photons uh, due to stimulated emission? Well, initially, we know that it's very close to zero uh, because our g over g threshold is very close to zero. And when the gain is much lower than the threshold gain, uh, we don't get any uh, stimulated emission or very low uh, stimulated recombination. And so this looks like zero for a very long time. And as we start to get close to the threshold density, uh, this starts to become appreciable and it starts to skyrocket. Uh, until it's just uh, a very, very high slope. Uh, so the slope is very much larger than our initial slope. And this is when we hit the stimulated emission being dominant. Now you might ask, what does the number of photons due to stimulated emission look like at the threshold current? Um, but that's a little awkward to answer because we don't, we defined the threshold current in terms of the threshold carrier density, but we never actually reach the threshold carrier density. We get very, very close, but we never get to it. And as we never get to it, or as we get closer and closer, we're traveling upward on this curve. Um, but you can ask, when does the number of photons due to spontaneous emission equal the number of photons due to stimulated emission? And this turns out to be 
when the gain is 0.5 times the threshold gain or half of the uh, threshold gain. And you can, uh, you can show that fairly easily just by setting this uh, and this equal to each other. Um, and so that means that the current where these two intersect, uh, I've actually drawn this horribly wrong, is actually less than the threshold current. And we don't know by how much because we'd have to figure out, we'd have to back calculate, okay, what's the carrier density that corresponds to this? And then what's the current that corresponds to this? But somewhere below the, carrier, the uh, threshold current, we're gonna get the spontaneous emission and the, the number of photons due to spontaneous emission and stimulated emission to cross over, to become equal to each other. But in general, because the uh, carrier density is involved, so between the transparency carrier density and the threshold carrier density, uh, this window tends to be relatively small, uh, at least on the scale of all possible carrier densities. So this might be 10 to the 18, this might be three times 10 to the 18, for example, uh, per centimeter cubed. Uh, it's convenient to think of the threshold current really as the transition point. So where we switch over from spontaneous uh, emission to all stimulated emission. And so we like to idealize this curve and say, actually, yes, uh, the laser onset is the threshold current. Uh, and there's a slight error there. Um, but it's just on the scale of the spontaneously emitted number of photons. And this is tiny. Uh, like this graph actually goes off way, way, way further in this direction. And so the error that we incur by making this approximation is pretty negligible. And so uh, above the, uh, if, we, if we then say that the total number of photons, we're just gonna approximate it now by this white curve. So before the threshold current, it's all due to the spontaneously emitted photons. And uh, strictly speaking, that's not correct, but it's a good enough approximation. Uh, and then after the threshold current, it's all due to stimulated emission. And so we can write this just as a piecewise function. And let's say that we want the output power instead of just the number of photons. Uh, we know we just need to multiply by the energy of photons uh, times one over the photon lifetime to get the output power. Uh, below the threshold current, so when I is below I threshold, the output power is just equal to uh, the slope of this, basically the slope of this curve. And we know from previous videos we can write this as beta spontaneous times our, basically all of our efficiencies, so our spontaneous recombination efficiency eta r, and then h bar omega over q. So this is the power output uh, when I is below the threshold current or actually we need to multiply it by the current i. And uh, greater than or equal to the threshold current, uh, we now know we just have a different slope, which we calculated before. That's just gamma times eta i times h bar omega over q. And now instead of just the current, we've essentially offset this curve by the threshold current. So we need to write i minus the threshold current. And then if we want to be precise, we can add back in this extra number of photons or this extra power. Uh, so we can add back in beta spontaneous eta i, eta r, uh, h bar omega over q times the threshold current. And this should be i threshold. And so this is the output power uh, as a piecewise function for a laser. So below the threshold current and above the threshold current. And we've fudged things a little bit, but not too much. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.